What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Hot Take. Today we're in a 2020 Subaru WRX, but it's not just an ordinary Subaru WRX. For starters, there's a six-speed manual, which is not too uncommon, but also there's a bunch of track mods on it. And the owner with us today, Ethan, tracks this WRX. Now he's gonna tell us about it. Hi, I'm Ethan. This is my 2020 WRX. And so I use this car as a daily driver and a track car. So it's got 20 plus track days on it. So really my goal with modifying this car was to it just all around enhance the driving experience in every way I could without compromising too much comfort or practicality. Suspension wise, I am on stock springs and struts. However, I do have an upgraded white line rear sway bar with chassis bracing. I have Cartboy boy N-Links front and rear white line control arms, as well as a more aggressive alignment. Brake wise, we're running Hawk HPS 5.0 pads for the street, Hawk DTC 60s for the track. I have that paired with some Faction Fab slotted rotors, as well as their stainless steel brake lines, and obviously some high temp brake fluid as well. Power wise, not too much, just a, just a turbo back exhaust and a tune. Virtual dyno says about 270, but I haven't had an actual dyno. They're about 240 stock. The throttle mapping is also a lot more linear. So the tune kind of helps with that. You have the suspension bits. Yeah, shifter wise, I have a Perrin brass transmission bushing, Perrin shift stop, Perrin pitch stop mount, and their stainless steel clutch line as well. Oh, well, there we go. We'll get this thing out on the road and see how it drives at first. Let's hear an exhaust clip. that shifter engagement yeah. not all a ton of rev hang yeah that was the other thing stock is there was a lot of rev hang and having the tune get rid of most of that was really a big it was like a game changer yeah i drove a stock one very briefly just kind of around campus yeah and it's like i know the throttle pedal tuning especially i know you're talking about it right. is so much better on this yeah. this is i my initial impressions this I is super well put together it's pretty much one to one so it's it's like if you give it 50% throttle it's 50% so it would be like a like kind of an older style uh, yeah. electronic throttle yeah. yeah when they had it more linear the ride is it's a little firm but it's not too bad yeah i, I mean it's like i remember i told you i used to have coilovers on it yeah. much worse honestly i think the car handles just as well in the stock suspension with the sway bars yeah. and all the other yeah eventually i'll probably get some Olin's road tracks for it or some kw's or something but we're on the hawk hps 5.0s right now yes okay i have those in my m3 and i really like yeah. them i think uh topher put them on his s2000 as yeah. well they really good daily driving pad oh there we go so i gotta get used to the gearing on this yeah. car load it up it's a little definitely bit definitely a third gear Third gear, I agree. Ooh, look at that. It sounds very boomy, but yeah. not like, it's quiet. I can imagine with the muffler really be really bad. It was very loud, very droney. Obnoxious. It just did not sound like a super should sound. And that's the thing, what I really like about this exhaust system that's on here is it gives you some of the rumble without having, even though it has equal length headers. Like it somehow manages to do that. Yeah, no, it's good. Well, that's just yeah. the, the boxer thing, right? Yeah. I'm glad to know this road exists. Like when I have when I have my car on campus next year, I'll definitely need to drive it a few times. There's the uh, there's the brakes not yeah. being at the temp yet. Not too bad though. That's good pull. Yeah. This thing's very torquey. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much above above 3,000 RPM. You've got you've got all the beans. Boost, boost, and more boost. Yeah. Yeah. So even being a non-STI, I mean, what did the STIs make? Is like 320 or something? I think STIs are 310 stock. So, so, I mean, you're not too far off that anyway, honestly. No, I think at the wheels, STI is around 250, 260, so it's around STI territory, or maybe just a touch above. Yeah, I mean, is all that extra money really worth it? Yeah. Knowing that this exists. I mean, with the amount of the amount that I've put into it, it's probably just below where an STI is price-wise anyways, but oh well. It's
it's about it's it's about the journey. I'm sure I could do it again for cheaper, but this is one of the first new cars I've driven that doesn't have an egregious amount of rev hang because usually yeah. you can't tune it out. This is perfect. The gearing, the the pacing of the shifter, the feels. You said you did a shifter bushing to it. Well. Yeah, I think it's on the shifter linkage itself because I know it comes with a rubber one stock. Yeah. So it is a little mushier, but so this is a stock shifter, but yes. just yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, I don't know if it's an OEM short throw because I know these did come with an OEM short throw as an option. I don't know if this has it. That's really short. Yeah. It it may have it. It very well may have. It's nice. Yeah. Now that shifter, it's like, it's perfect. It's yeah, because that's the thing. I never really felt the need to, like, do one. Yeah. Slides in nicely. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. Because, I mean, a Honda Civic Si, you get, like, 200 horsepower. Right. And a GTI does drive really nice, but they're very yes. soft. This yeah. has that kind of sporty feel, yeah. but it also has the power and the grunt to back it up. Right. There's the rev hang a little bit. Yeah, all the way up a red line. Yeah, That's not bad at all. Yeah. Not bad at all. Oh, you have so much torque yeah. at 4,000. Yeah. That's so amazing. Yeah, like when you're at highway speeds, 70 or 80, you really don't have to take it on a shift gear. Sixth gear, no. Shift okay. gear. <laughs> shift gear. What am I talking shift about? Shift gear. Pops on the way out. This thing's so well set up. Yeah. The brake pads, yeah. I'm sure on a warmer day too. The, the, the bite right now is a little bit soft initially, right. but I bet when you have it warmed up up the temp on yeah, a warmer they are, day. They are good once they're up the temp. Yeah, the hot kind of the thing with this car is when I was picking out all the parts, I wanted to like balance and I didn't want anything to be like too overpowering. I wanted there to be like a good balance between brakes, power, and I think you got, I think you found that balance yeah. because it, it rides, it, it's firm, but yeah. it still rides nice. And actually being that this, the shocks and springs are stock, yeah. this is pretty stiff already. I mean, new right. car chassis are so stiff. Right. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's already got, like, you don't really need coilovers in this car. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you put the cheap coilovers on, I imagine after you did that, you're like, okay, these actually are better. Right. Other than the alignment capabilities that you lack. Yeah. But, that's why it's like next time I do suspension, I'm just gonna get I'll get a really nice set. Cause really, it's like it rides it rides decent and the handling is good enough. It's mostly for the drop. But, yeah. Cause it, it does it does look good when it's a little bit lower. But oh, of course. It's not too atrociously high stock, so I can live with it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's still a good it's still a good like performance car kind of ride height. Yeah. Cause it's nice having the ground clearance when you're daily driving it. Especially in the snow. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I think you did this the right way, though. Yeah. You did the other stuff around it, sway bars, everything else. I mean, this car is yeah. like, ooh, it's dirty. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, because running no thing. toe on here. Yes, zero toe all around. Zero toe all around. Oh, man. <laughs> it's not bad, though. Like, yeah. you don't have, like, bad yeah, trend lining I, at all. That's that's the thing, is because it's a 235 tire. Yeah. It's not a super wide tire. You don't really run into those issues. Plus, yeah, yeah, something chunkier. Because that's the thing I've noticed in my Z06 a lot is it's two two ninety fives all around. Oh, uh, some thick Corvette tires. Yep, two ninety five Cup twos on all four corners. It definitely pulls you around a little bit on the road. I just didn't really make that much of a difference at this point. But. bike from the brake yeah. pad. Yeah, they're a little they're a little soft initially, but once you dig into it a little more, you start to get the bite that you want. Get some nice pops too from yeah. the exhaust.
didn't have a guy in front of us, we could have taken that a lot quicker. Yeah. This thing's great. Yeah. The handling's there, the power's there. Yeah. It sounds good. What more can you ask for in a car? Are these reliable? Um I know a lot of a lot of Subarus the, historically the have had the F20s are yeah. better than the EJs if you're religious about the maintenance. Okay, so what so, kind of maintenance is that? So I do oil every 3000. Wow. Spark plugs every 30. Pure okay. oil. Well, that's rough on this car. Yeah. I mean, it only has 30,000 miles on it, so I've only done it once. Yeah. Um, gear oil. Gear oil, you're supposed to do at 60, but because it gets tracked, I did it at like 25. No, that's I think, good. I think every every 20 to 30,000 is I think that's better good. for these yeah. cars when you're driving them hard at least. You know, there's a lot of uh, eerie similarities between hearing people talk about BMW maintenance and Subaru maintenance. Yeah. They, <laughs> the owners talk the same way. It's about the pre it's about the preventative maintenance. Yeah. You gotta do the maintenance on schedule. It is the same thing. Right. It's like the car will generally take care of you if you take care of it. But I will stand by that I think Subaru is just the Japanese BMW. Yeah. I, I think. <laughs> I, I, Their owners, I, I the maintenance. Heard, yeah. I've only heard that a couple times, but I, I do agree that that is, that is an underrated take. Yeah, that's my hot take. Yeah, I, I, think, that, I think that is a good hot take. <laughs> Just take, take it easy on the one two show. It was a little rough there on the... Yeah, it, it takes some time to get used to it. Two, sure. three. But, like, that's the thing. You definitely have to be mostly off the clutch before you get back on the gas. But it just takes time to figure out. You got it. Much better. So we've now finished our test drive of the 2020 Subaru WRX. My hot take, this thing was fantastic. I've driven stock ones and they're like, they're nice, but the, the kind of the attention to detail that you've put into this car and like picking out the parts and just kind of picking up the cars in all the little ways that kind of make it nicer. I think it really shows lengths to a car like this. I mean, even you could say the money spent on it. I mean, if you buy a new WRX STI, it might be the same cost, but it's not gonna have all those little mods. So I would have to drive one, but I'd imagine that the way this car sits probably drives better than one of those does out of the box. It's really nice. I love the way this car drove. It's very confidence inspiring. Anyway, that's my hot take. I loved it. Thank you, Ethan, for coming on to the course. channel. Is there anything else you'd like to say about this car? Um, I don't know if I have anything else to say, but I think I kind of got it all the way during, yeah. uh, during, the, during the drive and the intro. Oh, there we go. So with that, we'll go ahead and we'll give it a score. The score is as shown, 40.5, which ties it with the E60 M5 and Integra Type R. Odd company, but you can see where the daily categories help this car. Compared to some segment rivals, I think the Fiesta ST is a much better value and the Mark 7.5 Golf GTI is a better all around vehicle. The ace in the hole for the WRX is all wheel drive. If this is a need for you, then I would put this higher. Should you buy it, or in this case, build it? I think out of the box, the WRX is okay, but it has its pitfalls. The main one in my opinion being the throttle tuning, which this car is tuned fixed. These are higher maintenance vehicles, which hurts the value proposition, especially when considering the added cost of the mods already. However, as a new car that you can take to the track and drive home, I think this car hits it spot on. It's comfortable enough on the street, and I can tell that this car would be a blast on the track. Not slow, but not too fast either, with a good level of driver's feedback. I don't think that building something like this is for everyone, but if you're that 1% of people, I think this car would definitely satisfy your itch.